So one of the key pieces of uh, chapter nine and um, the story that's going to lead us to cool ways of enciphering things is Fermat's little theorem. And so that applies to uh, when you're working mod a prime modulus. And so I just want to do something that's very much like the numerical proof preview on pages 362 and 363 of our book, but do it for seven and just kind of talk through it as we go. Um, and so the first thing we could do is just start thinking about expo exponents modulo seven without any preconceived notion. And since it's a small mod, we could just look at the table. So I've go I went ahead and um, put up, oops, put up the um, multiplication table up here, um, but then also an exponent table down here. So we're gonna focus on this, although we're gonna come back to the multiplication table in a crucial way. So first of all, um, we could look at a to the k mod seven for any a in z mod seven. Um, so that you can think of that, of course, as an ordinary integer thought of mod seven, but we're getting more and more used, to, I, hope, I hope, to the idea that this is a, 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 its own world where these um, quantities just zero, one, two, three, four, five, six are their own entities inside Z7. So we could look at zero to a bunch of powers mod seven, but that would get boring really, really quick, okay? Um, because zero to the anything is zero, and zero is special in often in a bad way when we think about exponents um, and even multiplication. So we're just going to drop zero because we, we know it's not interesting. It doesn't have good properties. So from now on, we're not gonna worry about zero um, as something is, uh, that's interesting. So that's why, for example, in the multiplication table up here, I didn't include zeros just to make it a little more efficient. And here, I'm not including in the possible A's, I'm not including zero. Not because you can't do things with it, just because it doesn't fit the pattern I'm looking for. Okay, so we're gonna drop zero here. Okay, now one to a bunch of exponents, one to the two is here, one to the three, one to the four. Now that's pretty boring, but let's keep it in there. Okay, then it gets more interesting with two to the two is four. Two to the three would be eight, but mod seven, that's one. Now two to the four, um, a good example of efficiently thinking in mods is don't take 16, you don't need to take 16 mod seven, just double the previous one. How do you get the next power of two going down this line? Just double it. It's, of course, double of one is two, and it doesn't wrap around yet, so nothing's weird. Double of two is four. Now, double of four is eight, and mod seven, that's back to one, and then it just keeps going. Okay, so uh, three squared, that's nine. Mod seven is two. Uh, now, uh, triple that, you get six. Nothing weird about that. As you go down these columns, you're just tripling. Okay, now three times six does wrap around. That's 18 in ordinary arithmetic, so that's four when you do mod seven. Um, and then three times four is 12, which is five mod seven. Three times five is 15, which is one. So because tripling gets you pretty, get bigger numbers pretty quickly, you do actually have to wrap around in mod. But notice you do not have to take like three to the seventh, like at the bottom here, as an ordinary integer, and then divide it by seven to find the remainder. That's not an efficient way to do it, okay? Um, four, five, six, etc. okay? So we wanna look at some patterns. Well, obviously one to anything is one, okay? Um, there's an interesting pattern over here. Six just alternates between one and six, one and six, one and six, one and six. There's an, a good reason for that because six, we're, I'm writing it as six here, but that's also congruent to minus one. So I can think of that as minus one in z mod seven. And of course, z mod minus one to an even power is gonna give you one. Minus one times minus one is gonna be one. That's true in any uh, mod, pretty much any algebraic system ever. But minus one to an odd power just gets back to minus one. So this is these are really secretly one, plus or minus ones. Now inside the middle of the table is a little more interesting, but the pattern I want to focus on is, and the, the most subtle pattern, but the most important pattern for us is these ones here. This is interesting, okay. Um, when I look at k equals one, two, three, the power going up, when the power is six, that's one less than the mod, something very interesting happens. I just get back to one, no matter what I start with. Of course, one to anything is one. I just talked about how minus one to an even number is one, but it's much more interesting and, and more subtle that these guys are one as well, okay. Now, what happens if you go to, okay, uh, exponent seven, which seems like it could also be special because it's equal to the mod. Well, guess what? You get back to it exactly what you started with, okay? So what we're getting 
is these really interesting facts that a to the sixth equals one. And I'm going to be trying to be somewhat careful by putting the bars on here to really emphasize we're working in the mod seven world entirely. A to the sixth is one bar, okay, for all uh, non-zero a. And so here's where we um, we really don't want to include zero because that does doesn't fit the pattern because zero does the six would just be zero. Interesting, okay. And then the next pattern is that a to the seven is just a um, for all non-zero a. And you know what? That one. Actually, 0 to the 7 is 0. So actually, that one really works for all A. OK. Um, and let me just say, let me more explicitly, in Z, uh, Z mod 7. OK. So what's going on here? OK. Now, first of all, knowing that this, this first pattern, knowing that when you get to the 6th power, you get 1, it's not at all surprising that then when we multiply by another factor of a, you get back to a. So for example, if you know that 3 to the 6th is congruent to 1, again, to go down a, row, a column on the table, one more, one more row down in, one, in a particular column, you're just multiplying by a again. And so this is really uh, just an easy consequence of this fact. And we're going to focus on this fact. Okay, But this is pretty deep. This is the little Fermat theorem, okay? And we'd like to know why that's happening, okay? Now, um, if we continue the table, I have here, like, well, what about eight and nine? Okay, that is, has some very interesting consequences from the little Fermat theorem because, well, let's see, for example, a to the eighth, okay? That is a to the sixth times a squared. The rules of exponents still hold because, after all, the definition of exponents in Z mod 7 is the same as the definition of exponents in the integers. A to the eighth is just a shorthand for six A's or eight A's multiplied together. And that is definitely six A's multiplied together times two A's multiplied together. It's just regrouping it. Okay. Well, hey, if A to the sixth is equal to one, this is just A squared. So A to the eighth for every A, um, well, non zero here. Non zero um, is going to be back to the second row of the of the table. And a to the nine will be the third row, and a to the ten will be the fourth row. So the rows will repeat with in a modular kind of repetition. They will repeat mod not seven, but they will repeat mod six in the exponent slot. Okay. One thing I was going to mention, I forgot to notice that um, I'm not. I would never take this 6 and put a bar over it to indicate that it's in Z7. It is not in Z7. It's an ordinary integer as far as we've, we've dealt with so far. It's just how many A's are you multiplying together? And that could be A to the 2,000 or something. But what we're seeing is that Fer little Fermat says, hey, actually, it turns out that thinking about the exponent in mod 6, not mod 7, is going to be really interesting. So that's a big deal. That's a really, really important uh, thing for using modular exponentiation for encryption in particular. That secretly, when you're interested in mod seven as your basic way of doing arithmetic, then, and then you start doing exponents, it turns out those, those exponents have a behavior that repeats mod six. So that's cool. Okay, so we still have to really show this, that this is really true. I mean, obviously we've seen it on the table, but we wanna get an explanation that would generalize to, uh, to other mods. Um, to get a general fact. Okay, there's plenty long for the first part of this video um, and we'll continue in the second part.